What's going on guys? This is Kai Show. Welcome back. So we are back with another video. On this video, we're going to cover the post ban list, July 2024 OCG Meta Game Tier list. So this was catered for our new format. This recently concluded July ban list. So we had a new ban list yesterday, July 23, and now we are going to have a comprehensive overview of the new format this coming July. And of course, take this with a grain of salt because the format is really fresh and wide open so I just made assumptions and conclusions based on the performance of the deck before the ban list and also how the ban list have impacted these decks. So yeah we do have S, A, B, C and D tiers here. We are going to discuss each deck in every tier here and without further ado let's start. Coming at first on the D tier we have Visa's Finsmith. So this deck have been popping off lately on Japanese and local uh, Korean tournaments and I do believe that this deck is strong enough to compete on this tier list. At first glance, I have thought that I would only uh, put this deck as an honorable mention in our tier list but yeah, I came up with an idea that I should put them because of their recent triumphs and yeah, I do feel like that it is strong enough to compete because of the variance of the deck. It could play Adventure, it could play Manidium and Scareclo Engines towards the deck and the deck have a lot of starters and visas and the Finsmith complements each other that can make a very considerable board to nav navigate the format right now the recent con uh, concluded format right now so yeah on D tier we have Visa's Finsmith moving on next we have Dragon Link so Dragon Link have been falling off recently on the previous metagame uh, tier list but for me I do feel like that Dragon Link have a lot of uh, consistency uh, performances on Road of the King reports. Uh, they have been constantly getting 3 to 5 tops every uh, version of the report. So I have the urge to conclude that Dragon League is a viable deck this coming July format and also the Bestials on their main deck are very great assets on their deck. They could nullify the graveyard threats of these decks like uh, Ubel and Finsmith and also Voiceless Voice. So yeah, there's a lot of light and dark targets in our format right now, even the likes of Infernoid and Tachyon. They also have some form of light and dark. So yeah, you could pretty much tell that Bestials are going to interrupt these decks in the format and it could definitely hurt these decks. And I do feel like that Dragon Link has a space or slot in our format moving forward. And next we have Branded. So Branded have been a cornerstone of the format, no? They have been here since 2021, since the release of Dawn of Majesty. Branded is a very reliable deck and I do feel like that many people are going to resort back towards their Branded and they would feel comfortable playing this deck at the fresh start of our new format. Especially they don't know how the fo uh, format will function, how the deck will perform. So I do feel like that they are going back to their back seat and yeah, just play Branded. And Branded in reality is a very unpredictable deck you could uh, face a branded with 40 card and also branded with 60 with grass and also board breakers on the main deck like eclipse and trust and evenly match so yeah branded is a very tough matchup once you don't know how to navigate with their resources and tech options next we have adaman separator or earth good stuff so this is also like branded they could be very uh relying on variants they could play the 60 they could play 40 and their engines are differentiated on each uh, and everyone personal profile of this deck they could play the super heavy samurai and also the finsmith and yeah other bunch of uh, explosive engines on the deck that could work with the earth good stuff or earth line of place so this deck is very good on chinese and taiwanese tournaments i wonder how it doesn't translate on japanese and korean locals and even on the Southeast Asia it doesn't perform that good but yeah I do believe that the Chinese people and Taiwanese people does know how impactful the combo uh, oriented version of this Adamancipator can be in the format the only struggle would be Maxi of course and the likes of Droll and Nibiru but other than that you can pretty much uh, navigate all of the boards right now in the format you could break it easily with how much gas this deck has and also can be able to set up a very strong board moving forward and yeah we have the next deck on D tier we have Centurion so this Centurion was uh, 
what do you call it, stoned down in a way that Kaiser Coliseum was now banned on their setup so they won't have the Saki Kaiser Coliseum game 1 and those can be very underwhelming for Centurion considering that they are relying on floodgates like the Fissure and Kaiser and Skill Drain and Samu Limit also Samu Limit was a uh, uh, hit from the ban list no so the floodgate uh, lineup of Centurion would be rattled down and Centurion players will now innovate but I do feel like that the mid-range nature and the control uh, variants of this deck using the Hare, Rabbit, the Illusionist that could still very uh, perform in our format right now with the Angel State Q and other continuous trap tech on their options so yeah Centurion on D tier I do feel like it is just uh, just the right amount of Centurion right now in our tier list next we have a new deck on our block we do, we do have Thunder Dragon so uh, just today uh, I have browsing I am browsing Twitter and X and the sources of mine in the OCG and this deck have been performing really well on the first day of the new ban list and I'm not really uh, surprised because 3 Colossus is very good on mid game to late game scenarios imagine that you do have a lot of uh, options to play Colossus and Colossus is almost undying and it could definitely hurt 90% of the meta deck would add from their deck towards their hand and all of them would struggle once Colossus in board and the variants of the Thunder Dragon right now differs from Finsmith variants and also Bestials and also Pure so those three are performing really well in the first day of our new format and I am excited to see where Thunder Dragon goes and how far they can go in our new format so yeah moving on with the last deck on our D tier we have White Woods so White Woods very consistent deck no it plays Centurion sometimes it could play the Toy Box it could play uh, it, could, it could it could play Finsmith and there's a bunch of engines that could make this deck work and also this deck are deemed to get some new supports on following sets because we are not still finished on the Diable Star the Sinful Spoils storyline so they could get more supports and the deck doesn't even have enough support right now and I do feel like that this deck will get better from the new sets and right now this deck is looking stable no very stable in the tier list right now they are hanging on C sometimes D but I prefer it on high D because yeah many people are still not convinced to play the white woods uh, sad to say but yeah they are uh, on the top of D tier on my books next moving on towards the C tier we have snake eyes finsmith melodious so many TCG people are hyping this deck up and there are tons of videos and combo videos of this deck in the YouTube right now you could definitely see it once you search this type of uh, deck in the search bar and I really get why they are getting so much hype for this imagine finsmith with melodious so you could get so much value from these two engines no probably two of the best engines right now currently in the OCG and Finsmith definitely breaks the engine of Snake Eyes and the Snake Eyes hit hits are not enough to tone down the Snake Eyes they would lose consistency from Ash and Bonfire but it is still not enough considering that they are playing two engines to make the deck work it's not enough to stop the Snake Eyes Konami won't do anything hasty because we are nearing the World Championship uh, format and I do feel like that they are really afraid to shake up the format because it would affect the competitive players uh, run or experience for that tournament really huge tournament of course worlds it is and next we have Salaman Great so before I was thinking of putting Salaman Great on D tier but the recent uh, showing of Salaman Great on Road of the King tournaments and also the previous reports from multiple uh, metagame tier list and charts I do feel like that Salaman Great is that strong enough they haven't lost anything on this uh, ban list except for the fact that they don't have Kaiser right now it could be a huge blow on their going first but they're still going to have multiple Raging Phoenix they do have Promethean they can have ways to summon out Barone they can also do FTK right now so the deck is very strong and on the hands of the right pilot I feel like this deck is going to perform really well on our fresh July format next we have Takyon no 
So utak yun, very, very tricky to rank right now. Most people would even, won't even consider your Tachyon anymore due to the Catapult Turtle ban. But for me, I have seen enough list of Tachyon without the Catapult Turtle. And this deck is capable enough to set up uh, marginable boards with rank 8 toolbox and also OTK easily, very easy with the Numeron Dragon and Draglubion and with the rank 8 shenanigans of this deck, it's very easy to OTK and I think a Catapult Turtle would only disable the FTK shenanigans of this deck but Takyon could still perform and there's a reason why Takyon have been a tier 0 deck on Duelings before and yeah, I think it would translate in the OCG in a sense that Takyon have been supported very good on our previous set of DP29 and Takyon is still looking to be formidable no they don't really sh uh, show any signs of weakness even the topping list doesn't conclude using the catapult turtle so yeah C tier for Takyon is uh right I think the chef's kiss for Takyon's place right now in the new format next we have Infernoid so Infernoid very strong deck, especially if people are underrating the deck and if they don't know how the deck functions, they would get steamrolled every time against this deck. Uh, matter of fact, I haven't won any single game against Infernoid on my testings and it's one of the decks that I am very afraid of because the deck is also uh, tricky to deal against. They have 60 card variants, they could play Dogmatica, they could play Snake Eyes as well. So. Yeah, it's very hard to know the choke points of this Infernoid and it could really get snowbully and once they have gotten their uh, good start, it's hard to stop them and there's not many decks that could stop this Infernoid from taking over the game mid-game as well. So yeah, very strong deck right now, uh, just the right amount of consistency and far power right now to label them as C tier. Next we have Ritual Beasts, so Ritual Beasts have been very strong and very consistent on reports from the road of the king and they could also get three five six sometimes seven topping results on different metagame reports on road of the king so that's why i have concluded that ritual beast is uh, kind of consistent enough to label them as a meta deck in the format right now matter of fact i would rate uh, ritual beast on my own experience and emotions to uh, low B tier but for transparency and fairness I rank them on C tier because not many people feel that way for Ritual Beast but for me the deck feels very strong very consistent very uh, explosive and can also play back row with Fisher and Macrocosmos and of course Shifter once your deck plays Shifter you are guaranteed to have a very good shot on shutting down these best decks right now like Snake Eyes and New Bell so yeah very strong right now Ritual Beast. Next we have Labyrinth Finsmith. So yeah, with 3 time seal, no, many people are going to speculate that Labyrinth could abuse the time seal with 3 copies and transaction rollback loops and yeah, other uh, shenanigans from the transaction rollback that, like the Mayakashi and Ghost Meets Girl. So there's a bunch of yeah, unusual and crazy stuff happening from this Labyrinth. But yeah, Labyrinth is still the Labyrinth, no? They have been here since 2022, yeah. They have been a cornerstone of our OCG metagame and they don't really show any type of weakness because the trap uh, lineup of this deck could vary depending on the format. They would just cater their trap lineup towards their environment and metagame. So the deck is kind of resilient in a sense that they could uh, blend on the metagame and also you could uh, try other different things like Unchained Labyrinth and yeah, trap heavy variant of Labyrinth like Floodgate type of Labyrinth with Skill Drain and other stuff. So yeah, very good control deck right now. Probably one of the best trap decks that we are seeing once in a while. And yeah, moving on towards the B tier, we have Chimera Finsmith. So yeah, we are now entering the ranks of very solid decks and top competitor in our format. Chimera Finsmith, very consistent you also have illusionist package to make the deck work and you do have a lot of outlets to start your play and you could also play the dark bar state you and you could also play wanghu tiger those two are very irritating for these decks in our s and a tiers and many decks instantly loses to those two and it is a huge threat on our format right now 
if you're not prepared against Chimera Finn Smith and if your locals does play a uh, 2 or 3, no? You could pretty much get messed up from this uh, Chimera Finn Smith and I don't really underrate this deck. I highly regard this deck as one of the best decks in the Philippines in our country because many good players are playing this deck. So yeah, I rate this. I rate this deck as high as I can in our tier list. Next we have Finsmith Unchained. So another Finsmith deck now. We are going to see a lot of Finsmith decks moving forward considering that Snake Eyes got a little bit less consistent and weaker. But yeah, Finsmith is still going strong. It is new. It is introduced just uh, before and you you will see a lot of Finsmith decks in our July format like the variants of Voiceless Finsmith and Mementotlan Finsmith and Thunder Dragon Finsmith. Those can be very roguish at best or yeah uh, very resilient engine for these decks and Unchained is no different from them Unchained is Fiend and it definitely boosts the Unchained and more consistent as well than ever and explosive in a sense that it could break boards easily it could interrupt very well on their first turn so yeah very strong deck right now in my own opinion that's why I have opted to place it as a B tier deck Next we have Supreme King Melodius, so the arc deck of course, uh, Pen Magi wouldn't die because this deck is very strong game 1 and this deck can play around almost any types of hand trap and it could only suffer from a well time Nibiru or Droll sometimes and Maxi of course but other than that, they would be steamrolling everyone in this tier list even the likes of Snake Eyes would struggle with this uh, type of huge explosiveness from this deck and the only struggle would be anti-spell of course and some will limit and this type of floodgates would definitely hurt the deck moving forward post game 2 and 3 that's the only major reason why I am not really considering the Supreme King very high on my own books next we have Voices Voice it didn't get any touch from the van list it's full power right now and many people are going to resort back to Voices Voice it's in the middle of the pack and it's a very consistent deck, uh, very proven as well. It won YCSJ, multiple WCQ tournaments as well. So, yeah, expect that many people are going to go back on Voiceless Voice and they are going to try to find, a, find their groove on the new format using this deck. And Voiceless Voice with Omni Negate, Negate Summon, Protection, and High Attack Monsters, it is a very strong deck. And there's no denying that Voiceless Voice is very competent right now considering that they didn't get any hits from the ban list and it is looking to be better than ever in our new format and next we have runic so i highly regard runic because many people disrespect the deck they don't play back row removal they don't even play evenly match some trim their cosmic cyclone ratio and some even doesn't play cosmic cyclone and once you do that and you have found a runic on your locals or tournament you are getting annihilated and destroyed by this runic you don't have answers to their field spell you don't have answers to their floodgates and you are go going to get stalled and uh, gain LP from time and they would do any dirty ways of yeah, dealing with your opponent and winning the game with their uh, wit witty and gritty type of gameplay so I think runic is a deck that should be respected right now Especially we are going to have a new format. Many people will result back into playing stun. Especially they don't know what to play. And probably their decks are uh, gotten hit from the previous ban list. So yeah, I don't see any reasons why they are not going to play runic. It is one of the most proven decks in the OCG. And it's been there since 2022, late 2022, yeah. Since they have gotten their support of fusion. So yeah, runic is just too good to ignore right now and next we have another deck that is uh, kinda understated or underrated by many people Mementotlan so many friends of mine accolades and companions have been uh, have been really uh, questioning the Mementotlan on some days they look garbage on paper some weeks on Road of the King and Meta tier list it doesn't even look good for Mementotlan but I do feel like that this deck is very dicey to play against. They could be very strong on some phases of the game. Sometimes they are going to lag behind because 
they don't have too much aggressiveness on their part but yeah it is kind of good it's really weird to uh, put this deck in paper because it's really hard to identify the choke points and strengths and weaknesses of Memento Plan because it's very drastic you could definitely say what I'm saying once you have faced Memento Plan it's very odd to face, face this deck and they also have multiple types of interruption you could definitely lose against this deck once you are not playing around their potential interruptions so yeah very strong very odd deck right now that's why I am rating it as the top of the B tier next we do have the A tier uh, looking on our A tier we have Tenpai Dragon so Tenpai Dragon have lost two copies of their pivotal cards in the main deck the Sangen Summoning and it's a huge blow on first I have thought that uh, it is just a minor consistency hit for Tenpai Dragon but on my testing just recently just earlier I am getting tons of bricks and bricks and uh, really shaky hands for this Tenpai Dragon and right now I'm questioning myself why I have ranked this Tenpai Dragon so high because I have made this tier list before my testing on this Tenpai Dragon because I am using this deck but for me it doesn't look good for Tenpai right now and many Tenpai player would also find this struggle once they have tested this deck enough and they would also say that the Sangen Summoning would be a huge uh, blow for the deck and you're now going to rely on the variants of your hand traps you're going to draw perfectly to stop the opponents and once you have drawn two Chundra, one uh, quick play and it's going game over once you don't draw three hand traps and four sometimes you are getting destroyed by these decks and considering that you are going second you are uh, in a put in a very disadvantaged position to win the game and dominate the game going first so yeah very tricky spot for Tenpai Dragon right now but for now I would put benefit of doubt for the deck and place it on low 8 tier next we have Snake Eyes on our 8 tier so Snake Eyes very strong on the previous formats and we all knew how impactful Snake Eyes is on our metagame tier list and we are not going to deny them and we are not going to downplay the success of Snake Eyes and I do feel like that the one Snake Eyes Ash and one Bonfire uh, loss can be just a minor issue for the deck and they're still going to be very competitive with the likes of making the deck play chicken game and other consistency cards I do feel like that this deck can still perform at the highest level and considering that you're going to play tons of fan traps, staples, forbidden droplet, talent, all of those valuable cards can be very strong and pivotal towards gearing your deck into victory. So yeah, Snake Eyes on 8 tier. Next we have Fire King Finsmith Snake Eyes. So yeah, just the right cream of the top right now for Fire King and Fire King is still doesn't really get uh, annihilated from the ban list no, I have expected that R1 Kirin would happen but yeah parking is still parking they're still going to be a very grindy gritty and consistent engine and it's going to uh, tear apart, apart most of the decks here because you have snake eyes you still have poplar you still have bonfire you still have the original so you do have a lot of uh, plays and intangibles to play through anything on the format right now and you still have on top of that, you still have Finsmith. Imagine that. How blessed you are for picking up this Fire King and Snake Eyes before. Just before the previous. It's been a year already from this uh, Fire King shenanigans. So, yeah, I don't expect them dying out. And Fire King just is proven to be one of the uh, strongest archetypes right now in modern game 2024. Next, we have the last deck on our A tier. We have the lesser consistent, lesser resilient. Snake Eyes Finsmith but I do think that this deck would still perform considering that the deck is still consistent it is very easy to access out the Finsmith engine you can pretty much deal a massive amount of boards and Little Knight IP, Apulusa and the things like the Hiking Caesar and Beatrice goodness Beatrice is still legal I am flabbergasted that Beatrice is still legal right now just look at the uh, hit for Beatrice R1 it doesn't even make sense no why do you put Beatrice on R1 are you trying to nerf the Burning Abyss players no Bra Burning Abyss it doesn't even 
show right now in modern game in 2024. So there's no reason why you would put Beatrix on R1. And yeah, the only reason would be they are still enabling the shenanigans of Beatrix for this Finn Smith. And they're trying to, uh, yeah, experiment th things and look out for possible damages of Beatrix moving forward. And yeah. Finally, we now have on our S tier, we have Rest Ace Finn Smith as our second best deck in our report right now. So, Rest Ace Finn Smith, very strong. Rest Ace have been really strong in Japanese tournaments and Korean tournaments. The only problem is this deck doesn't show too much uh, reps or yeah, plays throughout the format. But I do feel like that this deck is very underrated by many people. Many people are not really... Uh, enlightened or uh, convinced that this deck is very strong right now but I have seen it firsthand on the hands of Hiroshi Odate on Asian English format in our country Kenneth Febra multiple finalist uh, placings on our big events in the Philippines and bunch of other SK stops in Japan so yeah I do feel like that this deck is very hard to uh, head on because you're going to deal with back row you're going to deal, deal with Apulusa with Little Knight you're going to deal with Impulse, you're going to deal with the Extinguisher and all of those possible threats from this rest case and you still have Vin Smith on top of that, you're still going to be very consistent, very uh, millage to set up your everything on this uh, deck to be honest with Beatrice Legal, with Caesar, with the uh, link climbing shenanigans of Vin Smith, it's very easy to access out anything on this rest case and yeah Moving on, we do have the best deck on the previous Road of the King report. We do have Yubel Finn Smith and I expect that this deck would be the throne and the successor of the best deck in our new format. Considering that Finn Smith really comple uh, complements the Yubel engine a lot and Yubel can set up a uh, pseudo Omni Negate. You do have Valdra, the rank 10. You also have the Blue Dog from Unchained. You also have IP Mascarena. You can also access out Apulusa easily, you can also make the sea, uh, Hiking Caesar. So the boards are everything for this deck and it's very hard to deal with this deck and you're also facing, you are also going to face a tower from this Ubel and yeah very hard. You, you need to answer all of those and uh, without drawing droplet, without drawing talent, without drawing change of heart, it could really get dicey from facing this deck and there's not many decks that could play around the board of Ubel. You need to stop it, so you need to draw DD Crow, Ghost Bell, Bestial, all of those graveyard uh, threats to stop them from yeah getting their Screamer and the uh, Fabled Lurie. So it's very hard to stop this deck. And also, post side decking, they are going to side 3 Solemn Judgment and they are going to play Summon Limit and Anti Spell. It's very hard to break the board of Ubel. And you, you are going to most likely rely on drawing the perfect hand trap and getting the best board breakers available for you and it's not a uh, easy challenge to do that right now so yeah it sums up our post ban list july 2024 ocg metagame tier list so if you find this video informative and entertaining please consider subscribing on my youtube channel and please drop a like in my video it definitely motivates me a lot so once again thank you for watching see you on the next one peace